Hey everyone and welcome back to this Wikipedia. Now lately I've been doing a lot of retro repairs on my other channel which is what all this stuff behind me is um, but recently my laptop decided to stop charging uh, so I thought I'd have a look and see if we can figure out what's going on here. Now it is currently raining pretty heavily outside so you'll have to excuse that if the microphone's picking that up. Uh, so here it is, this is a Dell whatever it wants to be, I think it says it inside, E5550. Um, and recently when I powered it on, uh, it had a whinge that the AC adapter was of the unknown variety. Now this is a genuine Dell AC laptop adapter, um, but it looks like we're having some issues here. And looking up online, um, you can get these on eBay uh, for not too much money, um, they're about twice that price on Dell's website. But I thought why not try and fix this one that we already have. Um, so that's what we're going to attempt to do. Uh, now first things first, the, the AC adapter, there is, a, there is a light in the power plug which is currently on. So I can tell that power is making it to the plug. Um, but one thing you'll notice about Dell and I think lately a few other companies they have a little pin right in the center of the plug now this is like a, a sense pin that tells the laptop what type of charger you're using so if you're not using an official one or if you're using one that's not rated high enough for your particular laptop uh, it may either refuse to charge might even refuse to power on um, but chances are it'll give you a warning on boot and you'll also notice that in the operating system, the battery is not being charged. Um, so the first thing I thought of doing was just jiggling the plug around just to see if that made any difference. But um, yeah, unfortunately not. It still just says it's connected to an unknown charger. So chances are the solder joints on the actual plug inside the laptop are okay. Um, so I think we can rule out the laptop. If it, if it sort of worked again, while jiggling the plug around like this, then we could possibly look at opening the laptop and making sure our, our plug hasn't got any bad solder joints. But I think we can rule this out. So we'll put the actual laptop aside and we'll move on to the power brick. Uh, now I'm just gonna unplug it. And you'll notice that light is still on because um, there's there's still some voltage inside the capacitors inside the power brick, so that will eventually fade out. Um, and we can even unplug the AC side of things. Now, getting to the power brick, I have already opened this up. Um, these days, these all seem to be glued together, so there's no screws or anything holding this together. And literally, the only way I could think of opening up was going at it with a flathead screwdriver, which is what I did. Um, it did sort of mar up the case a little bit, but I'm not too concerned about what the outer case looks like. I guess if this was a repair shop and this was a customer's laptop, you probably wouldn't want to destroy the case like this. You'd probably just order them a new charger anyway. Um, but around here we like to try and repair stuff rather than just tossing it away. Um, so what I did, I actually started by pulling that out, which is like a little strap that you can wrap the cable up in, keep everything neat. And that gave me a nice place to, to start cracking open the case. And I basically started from there and moved around uh, until all that glue sort of cracked open and the case was nicely chewed up um, but like I said this is mine so I'm not worried about it <clears throat> and chances are you'll be greeted with something like this sorry about the the shininess of it hopefully that's not messing up the view in the camera too much uh, and as you can see the the LED in the power plug has now faded out so there's very little power being stored in here, if any, so it's pretty safe to touch it now. Obviously, we don't have it plugged into the AC outlet. So, let's pull this out. 
and there's not much here to see at the moment so we'll open it up there's a little sort of shield with a couple of tabs that keep it all closed and there's a lot of glue inside in fact this was stuck down with a bit of glue as well so th all this glue is just to help um, stop any vibrations from the components and also um, as these are being you know tossed around a lot it's also to help these these bigger components um, not break themselves off the board um, so yeah that's why you see all this sort of glue but uh, on closer inspected inspection the um, the electrolytic capacitors look okay I can't see any leakage coming out of them and the tops of them are all nice and flat so there's no bulging or anything um, this big one here may have a little bit of power left in it um, if you've got like an insulated screwdriver you can just short those terminals um, yeah nothing's happening so I think it's fully drained out um, you can also connect a big resistor if you want to do it the proper way but I just usually just short the terminals <laughs> and if there's a spark then it's drained we're done so anyway getting back on topic we can tell that power is getting to the plug because that light does work but chances are there's an issue with the the pin in the middle which is the sense pin um, so it's not telling the laptop what charger it's connected to uh, so first things first is just to see where that sense pin goes into the PCB uh, and in this case it appears to be the blue wire because uh, the red one on the PCB silk screen it says V plus so that's our positive voltage um, black is ground and yeah so that just leaves the blue one and it's our sense wire so looking at where it goes onto the board it's nice that they've left this part open so that you've got access to positive ground and the sense wire would be this one here so what I'm going to do with the multimeter is just put it into continuity mode uh, and it'll beep when the probes are connected and you've kind of got to do this while the power is off because it's really hard to probe that middle pin without touching the inside of the barrel which is also connected in fact the inside of the barrel is let's see the outside of the barrel is ground which means the inside of the barrel would be our positive which is for this charger is 19.5 volts and a pretty high current so you don't really want to short the inside of the barrel to that internal pin well that'll probably kill the power supply um, just by shorting those two together but as long as we've got the power switched off um, it's pretty safe to to short those two together so I've just got a little alligator clip which is just grabbing onto that center pin obviously you can't see it once the clips in there but it is just grabbing that center pin and if we probe to the PCB we can see that there is nothing coming through so there's a break either inside the plug or in the cord in fact there we go so twisting the plug at a certain angle restores our continuity so the brake is right up here near the plug um, what I was going to do is just sort of flex the whole cable just work my way through flexing the cable to see if there was a point where we made contact again but it seems that it's right up here somewhere and now I can't even get it to come back in so it's probably broken even more from me flexing it um, so I guess the next thing we need to do is see if we can reuse this plug because they're a bit they're a bit unique with that center pin 
and hopefully just cut off the faulty part of the cable and rewire this same plug. Um, that could be a challenge. Let's just see. Get this stuff out of the way. How are we going to accomplish this? It appears the strain relief is not fused to the cable, so that's good. Seeing as this thing doesn't work anyway, let's just chop it off. Ready? Ah! At least we can test this again. So, we'll be able to find out if it works up to this point. Yes, it does. And we can also find out, with the help of this little alligator clip, if it's broken after this point. Yes, it is. Yeah, there's nothing getting through there. I'm gonna cut part of that strain relief off. just so we can get right up in there. Clearly it didn't do a good enough job anyway. I wonder if I can cut this insulation back far enough to find the good part of that wire. There's quite a lot of strands there, so I'm surprised all of them have managed to break at some point. Let's just do one more test. Yep. Definitely broken in there somewhere. Must be deep inside. May have to even source it just a whole new connector if I can. Otherwise, it's going to be a new power brick, which is a shame because that's a bit of a waste. Something that I don't like doing, regardless of how common it is. It's just a, a waste to throw something away for such a what should be a simple repair. I'm just going to keep hacking away at this, see how far in we can go. Right, so I went crazy and teared down the plug as far as I could, which, you know, basically destroyed it. I mean, without this sense pin working, it, it's already destroyed anyway. Um, so I'll have to try and either find a new plug or buy a new power supply. Now what's frustrating is, I mean, you do have to use a, the original power supply, um, which, you know, Dell is more than happy to sell to you uh, and make some money. Now you could argue that this is for safety reasons, which yeah, it is. I mean, you don't want to buy a cheap power supply from China, um, especially something that you're going to have sitting potentially right next to you if you're using your laptop on the on the couch or something so yeah safety first but at the same time these power supplies all use these fairly common cables now this is good for the manufacturer because they can create one power supply that's basically uh, they can sell it worldwide and all they need to do is package it with the localized cable what stops them from making a connector on the other side? 
so that if something like this happens and this cable stops working because of an internal break that is basically impossible to repair, <laughs> um, what stops them from putting a connector there and just selling you a new cable here? Why should I have to go out and buy a whole new power supply just because one cable is broken? Because these people want to make money. Okay, so after a lot of hacking away, um, we finally have the actual barrel connector. And it's kind of interesting because they've soldered the positive and negative wires to the barrel, which is, which is good. There's a good solid connection on those. But the sense pin uh, is just a crimp connection. And looking at it right now, it I can tell that it's poorly crimped. In fact, that literally just falls out. Um, and keep in mind that this is well inside the actual plug. So the plug would have finished back here somewhere. So there is no way that you would have been able to fix that without tearing the whole thing apart. Actually, here's the little LED board that normally sits in there. So this is just tied to the negative and positive um, to make the little light inside work. Um, so I had a look online and managed to find a replacement one on AliExpress. Uh, which does actually have the LED inside the plug, so that'll pretty much replace this this whole cable. Uh, it's even got the strain relief, so I'll put a link to that down below. Um, it's the the outer diameter of the plug is 7.4 millimeters, so um, obviously if you're looking to do this, um, check your plug before you go ordering the wrong one. Um, but anyway. Now that we've come this far, we may as well see if we can actually still use this plug. Um, obviously, I won't be using it full time. I'll replace the cable with a with a better one. Um, but yeah, we've come this far, so we may as well try it out and see if we can still at least put this to some use while the um, the new cord arrives, which will probably at this point in time take a month or two to come. So. Um, I'd rather not splurge on another power supply, so let's see if we can just repair the plug. All right, sorry about that random pause. So, um, yeah, I did clean up the barrel and resolder all the wires. Uh, it is quite messy because obviously these are really designed to be resoldered time and time again. Um, and at this point, this really is just like an experiment. I mean, we've come this far, so why not give it a shot? But certainly not something I would recommend anyone actually do, or at least um, not a long-term fix. This is just, let's give it a try, just because we can. And to be honest, this is taking way too long, so it's not really worth your time. Um, all I'm going to do is just sort of cover it up with some electrical tape, which is also quite dodgy. There we are, like new. Better give it a quick test to make sure I haven't shorted anything. All right, that looks right. There is a bit of a connection between the two, but it's not inside the plug. It's on the circuit board somewhere. I'll just check the outside again. So that looks good. And it says it was connected, but as you can see there, the resistance is going up. So it's likely that I just charged one of these capacitors on the output circuit and then quickly discharged it again. And that center pin, which is very hard to get a good connection to, but there you go, zero. So, in theory, this plug will work. In practice, it shouldn't be used, but 
I'm just going to do it just to show that this is possible, although definitely not recommended. And of course, be careful if you're plugging it in with the case open. Alright, let's see if it works. Not doing anything at the moment, which is a good sign actually. Um, let's disconnect that. What I'd like to do is actually flip this over. these connections while it's plugged in. Right, let's do that again. Multimeter is set to DC voltage. Let's see what we get across these. We should have around 19. 19.5, which is spot on pretty much. Uh, the lights on the front of the laptop should tell us if we're getting charge. And yes, there's a little light flashing that says we've got power. Let's turn the laptop on. We go straight into the settings. Hopefully you can see this on the camera. I can hardly see it from where I'm standing, but that's okay. Battery information. AC adapter 130 watt, which is exactly what we've got here. 130 watt AC adapter. So it is now detecting that this is the 130 watt adapter and it's charging. So that's awesome if we shut it down and power it back on it shouldn't give us a warning about the charger being unknown it should just start booting straight into the operating system or at least think about it oh yeah here we go it's just taking its time Cool, there we are. So, this is not a proper solution, and I don't recommend it. Um, but you can get the replacement cable. Obviously, you have to crack open your power supply and then re glue it back together and also solder the new cable in. Um, alternatively, just order a replacement power supply and save yourself the hassle. But like I said, it is frustrating that Dell are more than happy and other laptop manufacturers are more than happy to make um, a plug on this side so they can basically make this universal and sell it worldwide and not make another connector on this side where you could easily replace this cable if it stopped working. If you came this far, thanks for watching. I'm um, sorry it wasn't a proper repair, but once the replacement cable arrives, I might revisit this, but uh, you get the general idea by now, I think. Um, so anyway, yeah, thanks for watching this Wikipedia. Be sure to check out the retro channel, my other channel, where I do actual proper repairs and not this dodgy crap that we did here um but either way i hope you found it interesting so yeah you know what to do like share subscribe and i will see you on this channel or the other one in the near future thanks for watching